Uh, with regards to the MCO, uh, yes, as I said yesterday, we already have six criteria to identify uh, in terms of when we uh, implement, uh, although or we probably we continue the MCO or we really end the MCO, I do not know. But at least now we have the six criteria in place that hopefully with these six criteria, this is a, a criteria given by the World Health Organization. But we need to customise the criteria. And once we have customised the criteria, and then we see how best we can fit into this criteria. The first criteria we are lo looking into is, is a, a border control. And this is very important border control. If we open up our border, then you know, imported cases will increase. That's something that we learn from many countries that have done that. So we need to uh, look into the issues of border control. In fact, we need to tighten the border rather than to ease the border. Second is that we look into um, movement control. And we understand that movement control, that means the uh, transmission, local transmission from one person to another has been uh, decreased or reduced. So if that's the case, can, how can we maintain in terms of uh, transmission to one person to another? Now, our, our uh, tagline is stay at home. Once you stay at home, then we break uh, the chain of uh, a virus transmission. Now, if you want to review back again, there are certain indicators we are looking into it. One is the positive infective cases. So today we have seen our positive infective cases uh, is below 2,000 today. Yesterday was 2,045 cases. Uh, today is 1,000. Uh, if you look into our cases, I just mentioned earlier just now, 1,000. Uh, 900, 1,987 cases. Uh, so this is positive cases, which means it's coming down. So we need to control these positive cases, uh, whereby today we've identified the positive cases, although asymptomatic, we will admit them in the hospital. Those, uh, you know, mild symptoms, also we'll admit them to the hospital. And we continue to monitor them, and we continue to treat them as well. Until they are negative, then only we allow them. So, infectivity or positive cases that uh, can transmit uh, is, uh, can, uh, can uh, infect others, uh, we need to uh, basically isolate them. So, we are doing the isolation. So, you look into our total cumulative cases, this, uh, and minus the discharge and minus the death, and then uh, that, that's where we have the positive uh, uh, infectivity uh, cases that we have. To make sure that we can bring down the cases, that's one. And then uh, our daily cases now, today you see it's uh, two digit uh, 50 cases. Uh, so, with the 50 cases, uh, four, five cases, uh, basically uh, we are looking into uh, uh, imported cases. So, the actual local transmission is 45 cases, although we have 50. But the actual, yesterday we reported uh, 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 cases, but there are actually imported cases as well as the local transmission. So the local transmission is important. That is the second criteria we're looking, and also the percentage. As I mentioned before, the infectivity 3.55 now is below one. So we try, we try, we hope that we can bring down the cases now. And now is two digit probably in next one week or next two weeks. If we continue to enhance our MCO, we can bring down the cases maybe a single digit. We have seen that in other countries as well, single digit. So these are the indicators for us uh, to consider. Uh, in terms of the MCO. Whether the MCO will lift up, lift up or, or continue, is, we will advise the Prime Minister to make that decision in terms of advisory. So we will get the data and we think we show it to the Prime Minister and it is the Prime Minister's decision uh, whether to extend or even to have a soft uh, exit strategy on that. So that is uh, that's the second criteria. The third criteria is to enhance our healthcare facilities in terms of our labs, I mean, the turnaround time, although turnaround time, acceptable turnaround time is 24 to 48 hours, uh, the guidelines given by WHO, we try our best to have the turnaround time less than 24 hours. And we have to enhance our capabilities of the hospital, our capacity and, capa uh, and in the hospitals to increase our uh, COVID hospital, strengthen our ventilators, our ward, as well as uh, our uh, staff, for example. So these are very important in any organization, the most important asset is the, our staff. So I think this is uh, the, the third criteria comes under Ministry of Health. The fourth is that uh, when we want to consider 
lifting up the MCO, we must protect the vulnerable group, for example, those uh, 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 elderly and then those OKU, those under who have comorbidities and those who are undergoing treatment, for example, cancer treatment and etc. So we need to protect that. So we must have a mechanism to look into protecting the old folks' home, etc. So we are looking into that is the fourth. The fifth is that the new norms. This is where I think we have to dis discuss. When we start our life again, uh, it's not going to be back to normal, but we need to adapt to the new norm, whereby, one, there's no public gathering. Second is that uh, social distancing. Third, protect ourselves in terms of if you are in the public, for example, and if you are facing uh, a lot of people, then you have to put on your mask, or encourage to put on the mask. Hand washing, don't forget about hand washing. So every uh, now and then, you should be use your sanitizer or uh, and hand washing. Keep your uh, good hygiene and take all the precautionary measures. Uh, so that is important. And that transcends across all ministry, all departments and all agencies. The first is we need to look back, as I said before, when we WHO declared the inter, uh, public health uh, emergency of international concern, uh, the first there are three factors. One is the fatalities of the virus. Second, looking at infectivity of the virus, how fast the virus can spread. And third is the economic sector. They also look into the economic sector, whereby if you were to look back in during the first wave we protected the economic sector. That means whatever we do, we treated the 22 patients during the first wave and then all of them discharged. Uh, you don't even feel you know, in terms of the disruption, the social disruption or economic disruption. So now we need to look into the priority. We have started the essential list in terms of the economic sector. And now maybe we have to open up the industry and etc. economic sector, but they have to follow the new norms that, uh, for example, uh, as I said, no social gathering, you know, uh, uh, social distancing, and uh, in, and make sure that they comply uh, a, pers a good personal maintain the good personal hygiene. So all that we will put in place, and uh, we will continue uh, to adapt and to implement in terms of uh, uh, looking into a targeted approach. If there is an outbreak, for example, in certain area outbreak cases, then we will come in to look into the MCO, uh, enhance the uh, movement control in that region, and we screen everyone there. So it can apply to a department, it can apply to a factory, it can apply to a, a, a group of people. So that's uh, the, the, fourth, the fifth criteria, meaning we adapt to the new norm. The sixth criteria, which is also very important, is the community empowerment. So we have to empower our community whereby now we're back to the green zone, whether it's a state, whether it's a district, whether it's a mukim or a kampung. We have to empower the community. So we have to use the workforce uh, in the community, for example, in the district level, to protect the green area and to promote in terms of uh, the new norms that we have. So all of us today, we, have, we practice new norms. For example, we do not shake hands anymore. So from a distance, uh, we greet, uh, the way we greet people will really change. And then we continue to have social distancing, we continue to maintain the high uh, standards of uh, hygiene, for example, and take all the precautionary measures. So these standards will be there and it will be transcend across all ministry and department. So these are the five criteria that we need to fulfill before we can even consider to end the MCO. Uh, the date, uh, 28th of uh, April, but uh, be, uh, maybe two, uh, two or three days uh, of even uh, four days before uh, the end of uh, 28th, we will advise the Prime Minister based on our modelling, based on the facts and figures that we have, and based on the advisory from the WHO, and customise the advisory to our local needs. So that's how we're going to put up the framework and the framework is, comes from the Ministry of Health, but to fill in the blanks, we need to empower the factory, the employer, for example, to fo follow the requirements that the uh, Ministry of Health has uh, provided.